and welcome to the Lima Wolf Podcast. I'm your host, Raceland. I'm joined today by my good friend, Nate. What's going on, buddy? Not much. Just watching anime. Anime? That doesn't fit with the theme of the episode today. No, it does not. But I did watch anime on Toonami. Oh, no. Okay. Well, we're, today we're talking about the top 10 Cartoon Network shows. Now, you mentioned Toonami. Does that mean you got anime on your list? I do not. Okay. Because we did have a comment about about when I posted this. that We had a comment asking, like, does Adult Swim count? Does Toonami count? Stuff. And I, I wanted to... I figured maybe we could do, like, a anime list or a Toonami list some point in the future. So Not Toonami. Uh, adult Swim list in the future. That's why I tried to stick to Cartoon Network shows. Uh, I'm going to disagree because they are blocks on Cartoon Network. They should count. They just didn't make the cut for me. Okay, um, that's fair. But I was trying to think of, think of, like, when I thought of this podcast, I was thinking, like, shows we grew up on. I didn't grow up on Adult Swim. I, my mom wouldn't let me watch it until I was older. I grew up with Adult Swim because my parents made sure that uh, they'd watch it with me. <laughs> so over there watching like squid billies and stuff uh not all adult swim was squid billies <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to think of like off the top of my head what adult sw- swim cartoons are even was anime actually uh so it was mostly just toonami toonami was the earlier stuff more slightly censored anime and then you had a little bit darker anime for adult swim oh yeah, because I remember, I know we're branching out from what we're talking about, but I know I uh, I started watching Dragon Ball Z on Toonami. That's how it got me my love for Dragon Ball Z was yeah. Toonami. I also started One Piece on Toonami as well. Yeah. Yeah. But that's Toonami. We're, we're going we're gonna to stop talking about Toonami for now. We're going to talk about our top ten Cartoon Network shows. Uh, Nate, do you want to go start? you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, I'll start. I expect us to have a pretty good amount of crossovers because I feel like we have similar tastes. So go ahead and get started, buddy. All right. So my number 10 pick for my top 10 Cartoon Network series only had two seasons, and it started in 2001. Okay. Uh, It is called Time Squad. Time Squad. Oh, dude, that's awesome. I, uh... I put that on a, a different list for a future podcast because I forgot people... Forget about that show. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of um, time travel things. So this was a really good one. It reminded me a lot of Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Oh, and dude, I style. forgot about that show too. Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Uh, which is something I watched occasionally. I didn't really watch too much of. Wasn't that uh, Disney? No, that was Boomerang. Boomerang. Oh, that's right. Oh, dang. I just thought about that. Boomerang was also ran on Cartoon Network. <laughs> yes, it was a block on Cartoon Network as well until it became its own channel. Dude, I loved Boomerang. All right, continue. Sorry, we keep sidetracking. Uh, it's fine. So, yeah, Time Squad, for those who don't know, is about a crew of three that basically just time travel. Uh... It has the cop and his partner, Buck and Larry, meeting a little orphan boy named Otto. And, yeah, they just kind of go through the time travel. He, Otto's the smart one. Larry and Buck are kind of the idiots in this regard. They don't really, like, how they got qualified to be time cops is beyond me. But, yeah. It's it's just a funny little kind of mockery of Peabody and Sherman because Peabody and Sherman was more of a educational kind of thing, while Time Squad was more of a Bill and Ted kind of thing. Dude, I remember I didn't watch that much of Time Squad. It was just sometimes it came on in the background or something, and I remember yeah. like watching and going, "What the hell is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> It was one of those cartoons where it's like, did it make sense, but was still good? Yeah. Uh, Larry the Robot actually was voiced by Mark Hamill. Really? That's pretty cool. 
Yeah. I feel like Mark I, Hamill voiced a lot of the cartoons we grew up on, and we didn't realize it. Uh, like, it's possible. I know he voiced Joker, which was the iconic voice work for him. But right. He also has done a lot of voice work for other things. So it oh, is for sure. Possible. Well, yeah, that's great. Um, like I said, I didn't really watch that much of it, but I, I definitely, I definitely remember it. I don't remember the story very well, but I. Definitely remember like the characters, like because what well, didn't one the the you said the time cop is it like a big huge hulking guy with like a four o'clock shadow? Yes, that yeah. is his book. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember him. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, he was like super fit and like super macho, but he was also a complete muscle head. Had, <laughs> was completely stupid when it came to history. That's funny, and he's a time cop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right, cool. So I so, guess, is that, is yeah, that all you got your, to say? All right. Yep. What's your number 10? My number 10 is going to be very high on your list, I feel like. The reason it's my number 10 is because I didn't watch it that much as compared to the other shows on my list. It ran yeah. from 1998 to 2008. It's one of the longest running shows on my on my list. And that is Codename Kids Next Door. Uh, yes, it is higher on my list. What number is it for you? Number four. Number four. Like I said, I knew we'd have crossovers. Yeah, yeah. Codenames Kids Next Door. It was it was a cool show growing up as a kid. Uh, I really enjoyed the whole like we're gonna do things on our own you know terms. We were living in this treehouse and it it, it, it the show was just really silly. Yeah. Um, I remember growing up. I really liked Miss. Was it number four? Was that the one with the hoodie? Right. Yes. Yeah, that I think that was my favorite one. I, who's your favorite co- Kids Next Door member? N- number four was my favorite. Number four? Oh, okay, look at that. I remember there was an episode where they did a... They're making fun of Dragon Ball Z where number four, <laughs> number four had to power up and he got the super long hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Wallaby Beetles. Yeah, oh, man. So, so what was your what was your favorite parts of Kids Next Door? Why did you like that show so much? It was higher up on your list than mine. So I liked it because I'm a big fan of camaraderie, uh, and this was like a ain't like a giant organization of all kids in the world, uh, all ranked by numbers. Number one, obviously, because he is the best, um, and and I just. Liked the little spy style missions they would always go on, the little inventive 2x4 technology that they would use, um, the little side stories that they would incorporate within. For example, um, one of their biggest enemies was like a shadowy f- guy named Father. Oh, and- yes, Father. I forgot about Father. Uh, turns out, spoilers for anybody. Oh yeah, this uh, that's like twenty year old cartoon. <laughs> yeah, uh, turns out he was the uncle of number one the whole time. Oh, um, that's right. And number one never knew about it. And then he also found out that his dad was the previous number one. Like he was one of the best agents as well. Um, because I love how- in the. Oh, Sorry. In this universe, once you hit teenage years, your memory is white of ever being a kid's next door. And that's how you can continue being an adult and whatnot. That's right. I totally forgot about that. So, yeah, it's just they incorporate a bunch of story in like you'd have random episodes. But if you actually paid attention to those episodes, you would get a bunch of lore that was interconnected with everything else. I love how, like, this show, they always had, like, these wacky, crazy inventions. Like, they always had some kind of crazy, weird weapon that they would use to take down other people. Yeah, uh, two-by-four technology. <laughs> so funny. Was it, it, was it just there... Just wood. Yeah, was it there another organization they always fought? Oh, man, what was it called? They, There was, like, another, like, spy organization that was a rival. What, do you, you probably know. What's the name of that organization? Uh, the closest thing I can rem- think of would be the delightful children from down the lane. That's it. That's the one uh, I was thinking of. They weren't an like rival organization. They were the children of father. Oh, okay. 
Dude, I told you, it's been a long time since yeah, I've seen they, this show. They were basically uh, kids who were brainwashed by father it, to use delightfulization, which just makes them behave children. That's so funny. Uh, I love how everything's like, screw the adults, we're kids, we're always gonna be kids. Exactly. <laughs> they even had an episode where number five... Uh, number five was the girl with the ponytail, right? With the yes. hat? Yeah. She, she was the second... Uh, strongest. Right. Number two is the big fat kid who made inventions, right? Yes, he was the gadget guy. And number one was he was the bald guy, he was in charge. Number three was she was the one in the green hoodie, right? The girl with the, the long hair? Yes. Okay. <laughs> number four was obviously the, the one we liked. And number five was. Okay, yeah, so that's all five of them, right? There's only five. Yes. Yeah. So it's funny because when you're watching this, according to the wiki this is how they're described number one the leader and head operative of sector five number two the best friend of number one the joke cracking engineer of two by four technology officer of sector five number three <laughs> cookie the happy-go-lucky tactician and medic of sector five medic now, yeah that is like that is grossly overestimating she Number wasn't three. she a problem most of the time yeah she <laughs> usually caused a lot of issues uh and her medic skills i think basically just went to her teddy bears throw on uh, a band-aid <laughs> like she would not even a band like she would wrap up her teddy bears and bandages and stuff but it was teddy like it was the teddy bears it wasn't the other members that's funny <laughs> Uh, number four, the brash combatant of Sector 5, so like the RAF. Uh, and then number five, the intelligent, relaxed, second-in-command and spy of Sector 5. Yeah. So, yeah, it it was just a fun show. Uh, yeah, I, liked... I didn't watch it as much. That's why it's my number ten. I figured you would have it much higher like you do because you probably were into this show more than me. This was one of those shows like, oh, man, if this show isn't on, I'll watch this. That's, it was that, that's what it was for me. Yeah. I watched this show every single time it was on. <laughs> um, the, like, my one of my favorite episodes was when number five found out that her sister was working for the teenagers. Um, oh, damn. And because she looked up to her sister all the time. Uh, she was one of the head members of the kids next door. And then when she turned of age to be removed from the kids next door she refused to have her memory wiped and became like a rogue agent working for the teenagers damn it was a really like intense episode but also heartwarming because did you cry no uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think i cried at any of these episodes. <laughs> cartoon they, were just, shows. <laughs> they were just fun well I've, I've cried at cartoons before but this this wasn't that type of cartoon how this could wasn't, how could Mister or Number Two eat all that ice cream? <laughs> yeah, like, it wasn't like a super like emotional cartoon. It was just a like it had intense moments where you were kind of wondering what was going to happen next. Uh, and the way they ended it, I thought, was a really cool way because Number One leaves the team. Oh, uh, I don't know if I ever saw the ending. So the ending was Number One leaving the team. Uh, number five, I believe, took over, and number one went to join the intergalactic kids next door. Okay. So he went. Basically, the intergalactic kids next door is the best of the best. They are. They were. Any time you hit a certain status in the kids next door, you were offered a chance to join them, and he took the chance. He joined up with them, left everybody behind. There you go. Uh, which is kind of sad because. You know, he had friends and a girlfriend and whatnot. But yeah. yeah. But still, yeah. I just really liked that number one went on to become basically Buzz Lightyear. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that that's why I was my number ten. You obviously had a lot more to say about it than I did because you watched it more than me. So yeah, it, what is your number nine, Nate? Uh so my number nine is a show that I watched occasionally. Um I like it more for the idea of it, um, when, okay. because when I did watch it, I did like the episodes. There wasn't an episode I didn't like. It's just I didn't watch it 
as much as I did like Kids Next Door and whatnot. Okay. Uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. <laughs> that is my number three. Ah, we did a switch. Uh, then in that case, you want to talk about this one. Dude, I loved this show. Obviously, who do you think my favorite character is? Come on, Nate. Who is it? Wilt. No, it's Blue. Dang, I was wrong. <laughs> Blue is the annoying little yeah. uh, <laughs> imaginary friend that harasses everybody that Mac has to take care of. And I love this show. Like He's so funny. He's such a stupid little shit that I think he's hilarious. Of course you would love the troll character. Yeah, of course I love the troll character. They're one of my favorite episodes. And the most, I, this is like, when I think of the show, I think of this episode. Is when they go to the mall. Did you ever see the episode where they went to the mall? I probably have, but I might not be remembering. And they all get split up. And Blue, <laughs> Blue goes to this shop. And he sees these little cactus. These little dancing cactus that dance when you talk and he's like yeah. he's like oh i want one of these and he's like how much and then you know they he goes and he's like i need to try it out before i get it and he starts going blah 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 and then like he's like no 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 i need to make sure they all work so he has like like 10 of these surrounding him as the all the shopkeepers are like holding it up to him and he's having to go in, blah 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 as they're all dancing on him i don't know why that scene just sticks in my brain it's just it's it made me laugh so hard when I was a little kid. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, is that show? It, the, the, basically, what it is 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 that imaginary friends are real. Everybody can see them. You create them, and then you have them as a kid. And the most of the time, you get too old for imaginary friend. And then it gets like depressing because it's like they just abandon them like lost puppies. Like no, 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 I don't need you anymore. I'm too old. So Toy now, Story style. huh? Toy Story style, right? And so these imaginary friends have nowhere to go. So what it is is Madame Foster, is like, who's an old lady, she created this like basically like a like what's the word I'm looking for? Um, an orphanage. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't think of the word. An orphanage, an orphanage home for these imaginary friends. Foster's home for imaginary friends. It's all the unwanted friends come here. And they are there for, you know, for people to adopt them for their, for their kids. Well, Mac, who is the human boy, the main character, his mom is making, making him get rid of his imaginary friend, Blue. But he loves his imaginary friend. He doesn't want to get rid of him. So he, sit, he takes him to Madame Foster and to the, 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 to the home, and they decide, well, since... You are a special case. We will let Blue stay here, but you have to visit him every single day. If you don't show up one day, he's getting adopted away. And that was the whole thing, is that Mac had to make sure he gets there every single day to see Blue or he gets adopted away. And a couple episodes happen where, you know, that kind of stuff is a problem and stuff like that. But, yeah, it, it was just a really fun show. It's really funny. It was really wacky. It's silly. They introduced a ton of different characters that were so weird, like Eduardo, Wilt, Coco, who could only say Coco, but everybody... It's like, Coco was like the original Groot, in my opinion. No, Groot was before Coco. Like, well, I mean, like... MCU Groot, yeah. That's what I mean, is that people didn't know who the hell Groot was. Yeah, basically Chewbacca. Yeah, that's a better explanation. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Chewie. Like, Coco, Coco, Coco! Yeah, you're right, Coco, I agree. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Eduardo was actually my favorite. Eduardo? Yeah. You forgot all about Eduardo, didn't you? No, he was No, that's that was my favorite. The oh, okay. Big, big scary cat. Super big scary guy, but super afraid of everything. And then of course Max really awesome older brother. Yeah, I don't remember his older brother. Oh, his older brother was the main antagonist of there's two big antagonists of the series. There was Mac's older brother that just was like, fuck Blue. I hate these imaginary friends. I want to do anything in my power to make Mac not be able to see Blue so he gets adopted away. He just wanted to torment his little brother, basically. That's how the whole thing started was the very first episode, his brother starts like destroying the house, blames it on Blue, and then his mom's like, Blue's gone. 
And then he's like, okay, well, as long as I see him every day. And his brother locks him in the closet and was like, you're not going to get blue now. I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to go adopt him. Dang. Yeah, his brother's cool. a dick. And then there was a second uh, main antagonist who was called Duchess. This, like, hideous-looking um, uh, imaginary friend that thought she was the diva. She is the queen of the castle kind of thing. And she was just like... I hate these people. No one is as good as me. I'm making sure everybody's life is hell at this imaginary friend's house. Okay. Yeah. Just I, I don't not- know. I, I love this show. I don't, I, there's not much else to say. So I, besides, it was, this is one of those series. It, was, it didn't really have a like Conan and Kinsley story. You said had a linear story. This was one of those shows where it was just new episode, new problem kind of thing. Well, that's what. Kids Next Door was like too. It's just if you paid attention, you'd need you'd see the lore, and they would then occasionally follow up with that lore for a yeah. specific episode. Uh, okay. I did not realize Frankie was twenty two. Yeah, Frankie is. Uh, I forgot to mention her. Frankie is the basically the caretaker. Like, I think if I want to say it was, wasn't she Madame Foster's granddaughter? Yes, I, I thought so. Yeah, Frankie was yeah in her she was in her twenties. I thought she was like maybe eighteen or nineteen. No, don't ever look up artwork for Frankie Nate. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I I love this show as a kid. That's why it's number three. It's very high up on my list. I'm surprised you put this above your number ten. You said you didn't watch it that often. So I like the idea of creating your imaginary friends and making them real kind of thing more than I like Time Squad. Uh, So like I said, this is purely a, I like the idea. And again, I never disliked an episode when I watched it. They were always entertaining. It's just one I didn't follow all the time. Okay. Yeah, I got nothing else to say about Foster's Home. Blue is the best and he's annoying little shit and he's great. Of course. <laughs> uh, all right. So whose whose turn is it? Is it my turn? Uh, let's see here. Yes, your number nine. Okay, my number nine. I feel like I just just went over my number nine, but uh, my number nine is a show that ran from two thousand two to two thousand six. Oh yeah, Foster's Home was two thousand four to two thousand nine. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Uh, what's new Scooby Doo? That's what I, my next pick. What's new Scooby Doo? Okay. That is the Cartoon Network version of Scooby-Doo. They did a reboot of yes. trying to make their own version of Scooby-Doo, and I thought it turned out really well. Uh, I'm The the biggest thing that I remember about this show is the theme song. The what's this Scooby-Doo coming after you? I can't sing it all because I don't want to get striked, but you know. You, you, know the, you know the song, Nate. Yeah, I thought, wasn't the theme song like actually performed by... Like an actual band. I think so. I want to. I don't remember that. I want to say it's all time low, but I think that's wrong. It's one of those like pop punk bands. Man, I gotta look that up. Go ahead and talk <laughs> about the show while I look this up. I mean, there's not really much to say besides it was Cartoon Network's version of Scooby Doo. It's all the characters from the original Scooby Doo, just with a new coat of paint on it. New, simple new... plan. Simple plan. That's right. Simple plan's a great band. Yeah. Um, I was like I know, I actually know the band. Like, I listen to them. So, did you watch all, what's this Scooby Doo's growing up a lot? Yeah, uh, I think I've watched almost every Scooby Doo series. Yeah. Scooby Doo's uh, great. Like Scooby Doo can never really go wrong. Uh, besides, mm-hmm. besides some of the newer stuff, I'm not a fan of. But uh, Velma. Yeah, that's what I meant Velma by the newer great. stuff. <laughs> but like. The thing about Scooby Doo is that it's such a simple premise. Exactly. And you can. It is very hard to mess up. The only thing that I find sometimes is I'm not a big fan of the art styles. Right. But what's new Scooby Doo? I was a fan of the art style. Well, yeah, that's. They, it was an adaption of the original art style anyway. It just was cleaner. Um, I would say what's new Scooby Doo is probably my favorite version of Scooby Doo. I, it, it would be a really big toss-up between that and the original. So, for me, it would probably be a pup named Scooby-Doo. That almost made my list, by the way. I love that cartoon also. That would probably be my favorite Scooby-Doo branch show. 
uh, because it actually gives a little bit more backstory on their personal lives rather than it's just a bunch of teenagers going around solving crimes. Which is, I always thought was erotic. If you go through the timeline, Velma is like inventing all these crazy high tech genius level inventions, and then like you get to modern Scooby Doo, it's just like, oh yeah, she's just you know, oh, my glasses, and then she just. I mean. <laughs> In my headcan, this is strictly again my headcanon. She is their bank. Uh, she sold all of her inventions, and that's how they can afford to go around <laughs> doing all of this so without funny. worrying about like actually living. Because you never see them worrying about, oh man, what are we going to eat today? Obviously, they're not worrying about that because uh, look Scooby at and Shaggy <laughs> look at, alone yeah. are like eating out entire countries. Um, so yeah. Velma, when she was young, invented a shit ton of stuff, sold all of her stuff, and now they're because she got bored with solving crimes high tech style, and so now they're just going around the country solving mysteries with all of the money she made. Yeah, that's funny. I wish I hope that's true, man. Yeah, I, that's just my head canon because I like it the most. So there is one series, Scooby Doo series though, uh, Mystery Inc. I don't Which, know if I ever saw that one. I love that series. And it finally gave the whole Shaggy and Velma romance thing. Ah. Until they, like, ruined that aspect. <laughs> because they're like, okay, so now that they're dating, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, Shaggy's still obsessed with Scooby and food. Maybe he ignored was Velma because of Shaggy and or because of Scooby and food and I'm like what the come on she knew what she was getting into and, uh -oh. and then, yeah and then Velma starts like trying to separate Shaggy and Scooby and I I was not a fan of how they treated that relationship but yeah I did love the art style I did love the uh, yeah. way it was going so yeah, going so, going back to what's new Scooby Doo now, I get all the series mixed up. Is mm -hmm. what's new Scooby Doo when they started doing crossovers with like Batman and stuff? Oh, they've been doing crossovers since the beginning. Okay, I I can't remember specifically the differences between. I just remember really liking what's new Scooby Doo because of the what's art new, style stuff. Yeah, the only difference with Scooby what's new Scooby Doo and original Scooby Doo is just a cleaner art style. It's the same art style, just cleaner animation. Yeah. Uh, more brighter. Um, everything else, pretty much the exact same. So, I think maybe also different voice actors, obviously, but I'm not positive on that one. Now, is this is this when, um, what's his name? Matthew, Matthew Lillard. Lillard takes over? No, uh, I believe Shaggy was voiced by someone named, uh, Ka Casey? Casey? I'll just look it up. Uh... Casey Chasm. That is the original Scooby Doo. Yeah. Yeah. Casey Chasm is the original voice of Scooby Doo. All right. So yeah, he there is still being voiced by the original then. What, it's just uh, a cleaner Matthew, animation. Now I gotta look it up. Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard. I don't think he took up the mantle until he did live action. Uh, yeah, Scooby you're and right. And then after right. that, they're like, "We love this guy as Shaggy. He's gonna be Shaggy and everything from now on." Dude, Matthew Lillard, I can't... I don't know, it's a completely different topic, but Matthew Lillard's one of my favorite actors. I love... Yeah. He's so great and everything. But yeah, that that's why my number nine is what's Sue Scooby-Doo. It's just more Scooby-Doo. That's why it's not super high. But it's great. Still a great show. Yep. Agreed. So what is your number eight, I think? Yes, number eight. Uh, Ben 10. I knew this would be on your list. I knew it. Ran from... 2005 to 2008. I honestly thought Ben 10 would be like top three for you. No, sadly no. That's uh, but shocking. To be, fair, to be honest. To be fair, everything above nine is like they are my high tier cartoons. Makes sense. I think for me it's after four. Yeah, I. My top four are like almost tied. Everything below okay. that kind of goes in order because a lot of these shows. Mm -hmm you'll see on my list was shows I really liked as a kid, but I didn't watch it nonstop. It was one of those, like if it's on, I'll watch it. I didn't 
go out to be like, oh, I'm going to go watch this. It starts at 7 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Ben 10. I loved watching this. Now, to be fair, I don't remember much of the original series, uh, which is kind of sad. My brain has overloaded on so much fiction. But See, real quick, Ben 10 for me was another one of those shows where it was I watched it if it was on. So I watched it periodically here and there. I didn't follow the story because doesn't Ben 10 have a linear story? Yes. Yeah, it it does have a linear story. He goes from finding the Omnimatrix to um, is that it? That's just Omnimatrix. Nah. That's not right. No, it's an Omnitrix. Omnitrix. That's it. Yeah. Not Omnimatrix or Omnimax, it's Omnitrix. That's it. Uh, goes from him finding it to him becoming a like cleaner like his uncle or grandfather or something like that. It's his grandpa. Was it his grandpa? Yeah, it's his grandpa. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the classic business. I tried picking up the other, like the sequel series and then some of the other like reboots. Never really got into them as much. Uh, the sequel series was pretty good, but by then I was already watching a, so many other things. I just didn't have the time to like give to another linear storyline. Um, yeah, the again, the idea of it is amazing. The art style is pretty great. Uh, loved the whole like able to scan aliens and then the high tech bracelet basically turns you into a version of them. So yeah, that, that was be my number eight. So real quick, ben still on Ben 10. Do you know who really liked, well, who through a phase of really liking Ben 10 is yep. my son. Last okay. year, he started watching the, the reboot, as you mentioned, the one that came out in like 2010 or something like that. Okay. And he loved it. And he was went through this huge phase of like loving all these Ben 10 shows. So I introduced him to the original Ben 10 show, the, the one you're talking about. Yeah. And he really liked that as well. To the point where he like bought a Ben 10 video game with one of his gift cards that he got. And he was playing that for a while. But yeah, he, he loved Ben 10. That's why I, I know a little bit more because it's fresher on the brain. Yeah. But I always get mixed up what's new Ben 10 and what's old Ben 10. Yeah, this, uh, while it hasn't been quite as long, because I've probably watched Ben 10 more recent than I watched Time Squad, but I remember Time Squad more. Um, but Ben 10, I, I just really love the idea of, it reminded me of like DC and Marvel kind of style superheroes. It yeah. was like Shazam meeting Green Lantern combo kind of style. Who is uh, your favorite Ben 10 alien? That that's a tough one. I would I don't remember his name, but there was a like ghost like Oh, alien that's right. That was able to possess stuff and I I was like, "Oh, okay, that's sick. I like that." I uh, I really liked uh what was it? The Diamond Diamond Storm? Was that it? Are you talking about the, like, all diamond character? Yeah, him. I also really liked Accelerate because he was basically a speedster. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, um, again, almost all of his... He, Shock Rock he, was pretty cool. Name a DC hero, and Ben 10 probably has an alien that has their powers. So, did the original Ben 10 have Vilgax as a, the main bad guy? I believe so. Like, he was... Yeah, yeah. I Bill couldn't Gax. remember because I know, like I said, my son, he watched the reboot nonstop. It's on my TV all the time. I remember seeing episodes with him in it in the reboot. I didn't know if that was one they added for the reboot or if it was an original villain. No, I'm pretty sure he was the original villain. Like, he was the one looking for the Omnitrix. Yeah, he, he was an alien from space who wanted to take the Omnitrix and use it for himself. That's why in one of the episodes, Ben 10 could turn into his race. And he was like, holy crap, this is the coolest thing ever. And then he was tricked into giving the Omnitrix to Vilgax. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ben 10, just a great series. Uh, great story, really. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree. Love... I wish I watched it more. Yeah. I loved that his grandfather, Max, was like a part of a s ancient or a space organization known as the Plumbers. I don't even remember that. When did that happen? 
that was in the first series. That's was the it? organization that uh, Ben eventually becomes a member of. Dude, I barely, I told you, I barely remember this. I watched it here and there. It just cracked me up that, like, you have a space peace force known as the Plumbers. That's funny. So, yeah, uh, what number was that for you? That was my number eight. Number eight. So, moving on to my number eight. This was a show that ran from 2001 to 2004, and then they eventually brought it back in 2017. Uh, it's a show I didn't watch that much, but when I did, I really enjoyed it. I don't know why I didn't watch it more as a kid. And that is Samurai Jack. Wow. Okay. What? That's my number one pick. I had a feeling that was going to be your number one pick. That, oh, man. Again, I watched it here and there. Like, when it came on, I was like, oh, sick, Samurai Jack. But And then I watched it, but, like, I always forgot about it. It was one of those shows that was like, when other stuff was on, I'd watch that, and then I'm scrolling through the TV guide, and I was like, oh, crap, Samurai Jack's on next. I'll watch that next instead. Yeah. It's not one of those shows I would seek out. Okay. But, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the show. Sam Jack was a freaking awesome badass. Who would yeah. slice through all these robots and stuff? The st I remember the story was really cool about he was getting sent through time from Aku or is it Apu or Aku, Aku, what is it? Aku, yeah. Aku. I was right. Okay, yeah. Didn't Aku send him into the future? And then yes. he was just like, "How do I get back home?" And he just was like trying to find Aku the entire time. So he was sent into the future, and the future is now dominated by Aku. Uh. And so Jack is constantly trying to get home, but also constantly trying to save people from Aku's forces. All right, so you, why don't you go into straight. depth of why you like this show? Because this is your number one. This is just one of those shows I threw on my list because I enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, so the reason this was on my, is my number one is because it has everything that I like about it. Uh, art style astounding i love the art style of samurai jack everything looks crisp looks uh epic as hell the action scenes the serenity scenes or like it just has jack literally walking like you will have full scenes of him just walking through different biomes and it just looks beautiful like it's just a really nice piece of art nate i uh, think that you and me are gonna have very different types of art styles I like the cartoony, bubbly, silly-looking cartoons, and you like the super serious, like sh shaded cartoons and stuff. Well, I like that. I like those art styles too. Uh, and but this is just one factor of why I like <laughs> I Samurai. Jack. I'm just looking at my number one and your number one, and they're like complete, total opposites of each other. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, then you've got the music. Uh, everything was just like sound quality wise was on point for every scene uh if there was a serious scene you'd have like a quiet moment or you'd have a slow beat in the back just constantly making your heart slowly rise pressure uh or then it would have some real really great hip-hop styles and they're going went during the action scenes oh yeah music wise it was amazing um story wise you have a samurai which an amazing like character class kind of thing going into the future time travel to fight a demon who has armies of anthropomorphic beings robots and ghosts and all kinds of stuff uh so it's got sci-fi supernatural all kinds of genres mixed in then you've got the side characters like the scotsman who is just hilarious i don't even remember him amazing the scotsman was a highlander except he had a machine gun for a peg leg and he wielded a giant ass bastard sword uh and he fucking loved his wife like he saw his wife as the sun rising and when you actually meet her she's not classically beautiful uh the way he described her is not the way the cartoon depicts her um but she is herself is just a tank when it comes to fighting 
Um, but he treats her like a dainty flower. So, yeah, it just... Everything about this cartoon was good. I cannot name one bad thing about it. This would be a 10 out of 10 cartoon for me. 10 out of 10! Wow! That's crazy. I could see why you definitely like it, though. Like you mentioned, with all the time travel demons and samurais and stuff. Like I said, uh, it's just for me, it was just one of those shows that it was on, I'd watch it, and if if I for, and then I'd be like scrolling through the through the guide, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn, this is almost over. I forgot I was watching this other show instead. Oh well, yeah, it's one, one of the one of those. <laughs> one of the coolest things about it was from with my young mind, I really liked blood and gore and all that. I still do, pretty much. But really healthy for a kid. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Mortal Kombat, bro. Come on. So, uh, watching the first episode of this was a really interesting take on Blood and Gore. Because the first... It was either the first or second episode. I believe it was the first. Where Jack originally gets sent to the future, meets a talking dog who recruits him to save his village uh, from Aku's army. And it just shows Jack taking on this entire army of like scared robot beetle things and slicing through them just going ham and instead of blood and gore you're getting oil and by the end of it you see him his white outfit starts out pristine white by the end of it it's covered in black and stained gray from the oil nice uh, he is streaked with oil and oils dripping from his blades. Bo uh, robot parts strewn across the battlefield from all of the robots he has just massacred. And it, man, it was just such a, like, they toned it down for children, but it was such a badass scene. So did you so, ever end up watching the, when they brought it back in 2017? I did watch some of it. Uh, by that time, though, I was already watching numerous other things, and I never quite found the time to finish it. But what I did watch was just more greatness. Like, they did not miss a beat with it. Uh, and they even introduced the Scotsman's daughters, which I thought was really cool. So, yeah. No. That uh -huh. is that's my number one and your uh, number eight, I think you said. Yeah, eight. <laughs> How does it feel um, knowing it's so low? I mean, I can understand if it was if you didn't really get into it. Uh, I just didn't watch it that often. Like I said, I yeah. loved what I did watch, but when I when it came on, it was usually one time when other shows like on other channels I watched were on. Yeah, no, I made time for that for this <laughs> one. I was, I was like, probably okay. over there watching like Drake and Josh or something. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was like F Drake and Josh. No, Jack how dare time. you? <laughs> uh, Sam, yeah, Samurai Jack. Plus, Samurai Jack as a character is just probably the closest to my favorite literary character that cartoons have ever gotten. Really, like silly cartoons. Dritz Du Urden. I don't uh, know what that is. He is my favorite book character of all time. Really? And Samurai Jack is very similar to him. Wow. Well, that makes sense, then. So, I guess that moves on to, what, your number seven? Yes. Uh, so, my number seven is Star Wars Clone Wars. Not THE Clone Wars, just Clone Wars. That was, that was on Cartoon Network? Yes. Uh, Star Wars Clone Wars has the same art style as Samurai Jack. Uh, I thought Clone I, I mean, Wars was the bubbly-looking art style. Mm hmm? Bubbly. Yeah. Isn't Clone Wars, like, if I go to Disney Plus and I look at Clone Wars, isn't that what it is? Are you talking about, like, 3D animation? Yeah. No, that's the Clone Wars. Star Wars. Hold on. Star Wars. Clone Wars. Um, uh, yeah. I don't see anything. It may not be on Disney Plus, honestly. I don't know. Oh, here he is. Okay. Yeah, I never saw this. Yeah. This was 
like this was epic. This was Samurai Jack, but Star Wars. Um, and like it, ex- it just goes to show just how underpowered the movies make Jedi. Um, and Mace Windu, holy fuck, he is sick as he. So remember me just explaining the Samurai Jack fighting a horde of robot scene? Yeah. Mace Windu has almost an exact scene like that. <laughs> Uh, there. All the troopers are like, "Sir, I don't think we can make it." And Mace Windu's like, "Bitch, please!" Takes out his purple lightsaber and just blazes through an entire army of droids, uh, slicing through them. And then when eventually he gets overpowered, like there's just they start to surround him completely through sheer numbers. He's like, "Okay." But watch this. And crushes them all with the force. And then slices through them all with his lightsaber. And just keeps going. Uh, this was just like, amazing. It was just an astounding Star Wars cartoon to me. And you put this I at number loved... seven. Yes. Again, <laughs> eight through this, one. This is the greatest my... show ever. Oh my god, this is on par with my number one. Number eight. No, the art style is on par with my number one. Uh, because I already know like what happens to Anakin and the other What characters. happens to Anakin? Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> you know. Uh, because I already know what happens to a lot of them, it did kind of lessen the enjoyment for me. Because, like... Oh my god, again, Anakin is so badass in this one. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, he <laughs> genuinely was... All of them. Like, it It kind of ruined... Or didn't ruin. It just kind of, like, made me sad. Real, watching that and then realizing what happens in the other in the movies. What happens? Because you're seeing all of these Jedi who are just OP as hell in this. Again, Mace Windu takes on an entire army of droids. And then the way he goes out in the movies? Oh, it just... It, it kind of infuriates me at that point. Um, it it was just a good show. I loved it. The art style, again, though, was j- pretty much Samurai Jack style, which is another factor of why I loved it so much. See, for me, I'm a very, very casual Star Wars fan. I enjoyed the originals. I enjoyed the prequels more than... I think the prequels are my favorite trilogy of Star Wars. I know. Come at me, comments. Uh... D- the newer trilogy don't like. Uh, some of the here and there movies were good, but f- as for TV shows, I don't think I watched any Star Wars TV shows at all, whatsoever. I Even mean, the I new think stuff. This was the first Star Wars TV show I watched. Like I, I didn't really watch any Star Wars TV shows when this came out. I was still like. Samurai Jack is amazing. Saw they were doing a Star Wars version of Samurai Jack and was like, hell yeah, let's do this. Then watched it and I was like, hell yeah, these fight scenes are amazing. Hell yeah, these Jedi are amazing. I can see you, Nate, being the kid that when Star Wars came out in theaters, like going to the prequels or something, you're probably first in line, edge of your seat, can't wait to see this movie. And I was just like, I'll get there when I get there. No, no. Uh... First off, I've never been that kind of person. Uh-huh. I don't like going to public places usually. The only time I do is to be with friends. Uh, but and you most know of my that you friends weren't really into Star Wars that much. You know that when you saw that trailer, you were super hyped. Oh yeah, when I saw the trailer, I was like, ah, I can't wait for to watch this at home. <laughs> like, I've always been a home buddy. Yeah. Never been the guy to suggest to go out and about. <laughs> I had to force you to go out when we go out. Yes, most people do. <laughs> come on, Nate. This new movie's out. You really want to see it? Yeah, but that's like going out. Like, come on, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus the like the episodes, like they weren't very long. I don't. No. Th- I think let's see here. Uh, f- season one, the first season consisted of ten episodes, each episode lasting maybe three to four minutes. Really. Yeah, it they, it was a menace years. It wasn't like a oh, full on show. I didn't this know this was that. like 
here is a scene from Star Wars Clone Wars that you would not see otherwise. And it just, it was really cool. Oh, okay. So yeah, I get it. You're into Star Wars. I get why this would be on your list. Yeah. Uh, and again, from 8 to 1, to me, they're all really good cartoons for different reasons. Uh, my top three are probably nostalgia, not going to lie. That's our mo- but, That's like my, my entire list is nostalgia and 8. No, I mean like <laughs> because when I, I may not be talking quite as enthusiastic about them, it's p- probably more nostalgia. My number so, one yeah. is I, I know is not a great show. But I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was my number seven. Uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, not to be confused with Star Wars The Clone Wars. Yes, because they really worked on that name very, very well. To I mean, again, different- Clone Wars <laughs> Clone Wars was literally just like a very short series. They were going to basically commercials. They were shown in between shows. They're like the side panels on a comic. Yeah. Uh, but just done epically (laughs) i if you can actually watch it i do highly recommend it if you like that era of star wars and just want to see epic just awesomeness i think my son would be more interested in that than i would be because my son is all about darth vader right now he said that darth vader is one of his favorite characters of all time right now that's concerning yeah isn't it a little, yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite Star Wars character? The guy who kills everyone. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, okay, then I highly suggest you watch it with your son. If I can find it. Uh, he started yeah. watching The Clone Wars not that long ago. He he really liked that. That's the yeah. 3D animation one. Yeah. All right, the we got we got we're at like 55 minutes. We got to we got to keep going. All right, so my number seven is another one of those shows that is 100% on your list, and that is, it ran from 2001 to 2007, and that is The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Okay. Is that on your list? Not at all. Really? I thought this would uh, for sure be on your list. So, funny thing, I wasn't a big fan of Billy and Mandy, or uh, there was another show that was the same style. Um... But either way, I wasn't a big fan of the show. There was a webcomic where the artist used Cartoon Network's universe to create a kind of centralized universe with them. So, like, Samurai Jack was a gym teacher. Uh, Grimm was back into the afterlife, and he was, like, the ruler of hell. Um, uh, okay. The webcomic, I thought, was astounding. The cartoon, yeah. The cartoon was another, just like Samurai Jack for me. It was one of those, like, I catch them when I catch them kind of shows. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of this. Like I said, most of the shows up until number five was one of those, I catch it when I catch it kind of shows. So, the biggest drawback for me in watching that show was Billy. I liked Billy. Billy, oh my gosh. I'd... <laughs> Billy's so funny. Oh my god. If you can't tell, I like annoying characters. He was so annoying. <laughs> and then you got Mandy, who's the most evil, cynical person you'll ever meet. Yeah. Like, I love how Grim is supposed to be, I am death, I am the Grim Reaper, and Mandy's like, bitch, please. Like, I fucking dare you to try something. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, if I remember right, didn't they... So, the whole concept of the show is that, if I remember right, their gerbil dies or something like that. Grim comes to get the soul of their pet, and Billy and Mandy are like, "Hold up, you're the Grim Reaper. I want you to be under our control." And he's like, "Foolish mortals! I am the Grim Reaper. I will kill you if you even try." Fine. I. How about a competition? And if I remember right, isn't it a limbo competition? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's they challenge him to a limbo. Convers- uh, competition and then they tr- Mandy does something to trick him he loses his balance and then becomes their servant yeah <laughs> I want to say it's a limbo competition I'm, I'm almost certain. I'm almost positive it is 
I'm fairly certain I am mixing up some of the cartoon with the webcomic that I read because uh, my lore is definitely slightly different. I'm almost positive that's the first episode. Is that there's yeah. like a gerbil thigh? I never even watched the first episode. I just I was just watching <laughs> occasional episode and being like, "Fucking Billy." <laughs> <laughs> Billy is the greatest. And if I remember, I, like later on in the series, doesn't Billy befriend like this giant talking spider? I, I, no wanted, clue. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I would. I think you are correct because there was a talking, a giant talking spider in the web comic. Nate, we're talking about the cartoon. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like my, my pretty much all I remember of the show is from the web comic. So. I think you're correct because the webcomic did feature a giant spider always hanging around Billy. I remember there's a really good episode where I don't know why this episode sticks out to me. They go to the beach and a lot of crap happens where Billy's just ruining everything like he always does. And Mandy's just like, I want to murder everybody. And then Grimm has like, if I remember, spends half the episode fighting these dogs that try to eat him because he's made of bones. And it ends Mm. up with the dogs burying him alive. Damn. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this was just one of those shows I caught ever so often. It was just so wacky and silly. Billy was awesome. Right, Nate? B- Billy was awesome? Billy had his moments. I'll Billy give was you that. Great. Billy was great. Okay, you can't sit here and say you don't like Billy if you enjoy shows like Rin and Stimpy. They're the same freaking concept. I hated Rin and Stimpy. Oh, did you? <laughs> Yeah, I hate that show. You don't like shows where the character is so stupid. If I see Ren and Stimpy on, I will immediately either go in the other room or change the channel. <laughs> yeah, those kind of cartoons where the characters are just so over-the-top stupid, you don't like those? Usually, no. If those are some of my favorites. Those are some of my favorites. <laughs> if they're a side character, I can gloss over it and be like, okay, that classic idiot. But if it's the main character, I'm like, I'm, it's force feeding me stupidity, and huh, I let's cannot see, handle it. Let's see what we've got over my favorite characters on this list so far. We've talked about Billy. We've talked about Blue from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Blue <laughs> is not a complete idiot. He's just a maniacal, hyper energetic creature. So he's me. He's not a complete he's idiot. A, he was me as a child. Is basically what you're saying. Possibly. Uh, I, don't, I, I didn't know you as a child. I was a I hyperactive ADHD kid who would bounce off the walls and talk to every, like just nonstop talking. Sounds more like cheese, doesn't it? What? Doesn't that sound more like cheese from Foster Some Imaginary F- Kids? Cheese was just a freaking moron. I mean, it sounds like. No. No. Cheese is the Billy equivalent to Foster's Home. I know. I, hate I like cheese. chocolate milk. <laughs> I hated cheese so much. Cheese is great. <laughs> it's the one time I hacked to actually say the words "I hate cheese." <laughs> I can't forget about cheese. That's some of the best episodes. <laughs> of course, you'd think that. So uh, back to Billy and Mandy. I have nothing really else to say besides, like, I love the concept of these two complete polar opposite characters. One's a complete utter moron. One's an evil, crazy bitch. Just enslaving the fucking I Grim say, Reaper. I did like the fact that you have a super serious, mel- like, very dramatic character have a soft spot for such a complete imbecile. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Like that. How does she I'm put like, up with Billy? I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, man, the way you, like, her intolerance for everything else in that world, she must be using that patience purely to be friends with Billy. That's why she shows short with everything, is that she's using up all of her patience just to be friends with Billy. Fun fact, uh, the guy who voices Grimm is Greg Eagles. Do you know who that is? The f- he's a pretty famous voice actor. No clue. Uh, he also voices uh, Hermes Comrade in Futurama. He okay. oh, he voices a bunch of like really famous stuff. He what was it? Oh my god! I just had it in my brain. Oh man! Now I don't remember. Wow. Hold on. 
the he voices apparently he voices Jax in Mortal Kombat. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he he's a very famous voice actor. Man, that bums me. I had it in my head. I was ready to say it, and then boom, forgot. Immediately forgot. I'm looking at his IMDb. Now. That's what I'm looking at because like he he's okay, very so famous. He plays Aku Aku. That's cool. It was one of those like Cartoon Network shows that uh, he voices. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, let's see here. Rokotaru from Afro Samurai. That's Apparently, cool. he played in uh, Batman Beyond as Max's dad. Hmm. He played in Dexter's Lab. He voices so many characters. But yeah, he... The, the, one of the biggest ones is he is the voice of Grimm. He, that is what he's mostly known for. He plays man in Captain Planet of the, and the Planeteers. There's it's a Lobo man. TV show? Hmm. Oh, I played Tiki in Dexter's Laboratory? Okay. And man number one and capital G? Told you, man. This dude is iconic for playing okay. lots of voice actors. Charles from Spawn. Okay. He was in Saints Row, Stillwater resident. He also played the general in Saints Row too. Dude, he voiced Luke Cage in Marvel's Ultimate Alliance. There you go. Hell yeah, man! Apparently, he did a lot of video games. He voiced Lobo in the series. That's what I was thinking. He's he voiced Sony in Bleach. Yeah, this guy's got some pretty good picks. Oh yeah, I told you, man. He's a very very famous voice actor. But yeah, that is my number seven. We need to, we need to move on. So what right. is your number six? So my number six is Teen Titans. That is my number four. From 2003 to 2006. I got 2005. Maybe I just read wrong. Oh, uh, well, 2006 was the specials and the movie. Ah, okay. I include those because it was kind of like the tie-up of the Makes actual sense. series. Yeah, Teen Titans uh, are great, man. Yes, and not to be confused with Teen Titans Go. Which is which not great. My son it, my son freaking loves Teen Titans Go. Loves it. I mean, I've watched a few episodes, and while I'm still pissed that they canceled Teen Titans and then brought us Teen Titans Go, the and I'm not a big fan of the humor of Teen Titans Go, uh... There are some bits of it where I'm like, man, that would have been so much cooler if it was just Teen Titans. Just... I will say there's one big positive to Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. It brought us uh, Freakazoid back. No, no, oh. no. Never mind. They finally do the love story between Beast Boy and Raven. Oh, yeah? Did yeah. they? Oh, they very, very go. They go hard on it. They're like, Beast Boy is obsessed with Raven in that show. Tara, no. Tara is kind of a background character in that show. So she's in Teen Titans Go then? I okay. think she shows up a few times. Like I said, I only catch it when my son watches it. I wasn't sure if she was still a statue. I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, and the original Teen Titans is what got me into the Teen Titans comics. Yeah. Like It's what introduced me to Cyborg, who's one of my favorite DC characters. Beast yeah. Boy, who's literally my top three t favorite DC characters. A lot of the Robins. Like, they had so many awesome characters, and this is what sparked that love for those characters. See, I tried reading some of the Teen Titan comics oh, after uh... watching this show, and I couldn't get into them because it just wasn't the same characterization of oh, them. Oh, it doesn't. But I actually think the comics are better than the TV show. I, I do not agree. But <laughs> I can understand a... why you would. Um, and, just, and Deathstroke is the main villain. I, it's like one of my favorite DC villains of all time is Deathstroke. Uh, you mean Slade? Uh, it's Deathstroke. <laughs> yeah, it is. But they <laughs> named him Slade for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, they went with his actual name instead of his Slade code Wilson. name. Yeah. No, no clue. But I will say that because he was voiced by Ron Perlman. He's voiced I, by Ron Perlman? Are you serious? Yeah, how could you not like? I that didn't is know such that. An iconic voice. That's like, crazy. The, Hellboy. The moment I heard Slade, I was like, "Holy fuck!" 
is that who I think it is? That's Hellboy. I up <laughs> and I'm like, hell yeah, that's motherfucking Ron Perlman. That's uh, crazy. I had no idea that was Ron Perlman. Which just made it all the better. He, It was great. Um, <laughs> that's cool, actually. I mean, I yeah. only know Ron Perlman from Hellboy, but yeah. I mean, I feel like that is what most people know Ron Perlman from. Yeah. Other than, uh, because he was also in that TV show, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, I never saw it. So why is Teen Titans, like, number six on your list? Uh, because, I, again, I mean, I'm a, I'm a broken record at this point. I love the animation style. <laughs> uh, loved... Not really the music. Like the music was okay. It was. It just wasn't memorable, in my opinion. Like it fit the show, but it wasn't like iconic, in my opinion. So I told you uh, number number five, one through five is shows I actually sought out and was like, if they come on on the guide, I'm gonna make sure I set up a block to watch those. This was yeah. number four. This was definitely one of those shows like, yo, Teen Titans is on at six. I need the TV, kind of things like that. Yeah, no, Teen that, Titans was one of my shows that I really liked. That's the same for me. Uh, one through eight was is that um, I would actively seek out these shows be, to watch them. Thankfully, yeah. they were all cart. Well, obviously, they were Cartoon Network. This is a Cartoon Network thing, but thankfully, they were all different times and different eras. You know, what's really great, Nate. Is I'm pretty sure ninety percent of this list is since it's Cartoon Network is now on HBO or on Max. I'm sorry, it's Max now. Because Cartoon Network is now owned by Max. So yes, if you wanted to uh, rewatch any of these shows, it's all on Max. I'm fairly certain the majority... I don't know if some of them are, like Time Squad or... No, those are some of the obscure ones. Yeah, I don't know if Clone Wars is on there. Scooby-Doo, Teen Disney Titans Club. are for sure, because they are both owned by Warner Brothers and DC, which are both subsets of Max. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it now five seasons on max yeah so yeah it's it's it great was just a great show Agreed. love the voice acting love the interaction between the characters uh this was the one time i so when i was watching this show i could never figure out if robin was dick grayson robin or tim drake robin he was gone uh, he was damien I, lane no, obviously <laughs> not Damien Wayne. <laughs> Damien Wayne wasn't even invented yet. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Dick Grayson Robin. It was. That, yeah, which I always made me conflicted because I like Dick Grayson with Barbara Gordon, but in this show, Starfire. Like, yeah, I want him to be with Starfire, and I'm just like, fucking hell. Uh, I like Starfire better than Barbara Gordon. I do not. Uh, so here, quick, real quick. Before we move on, who's your favorite member of the Teen Titans? Robin, obviously. Of the it's edgy, Robin. serious ninja. Like, come on. Yeah, it has it's Beast on. Boy. Beast Boy is the best character. Of course it is. The it's... hyperactive. <laughs> if you see a, you see the trend here. You see the pattern. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we both have trends. We both like. You like edge lords. Characters exactly. Uh, Nate, did you ever see the movie? I bought this for my son because he, like I said, he was super into Teen Titans Go. Where they did Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go. Did you ever see that movie? I watched, so I didn't watch the full thing. I walked in while my niece was watching it and was like, oh man, it's such a shame they canceled that show. But I was, I had to go somewhere, so I couldn't stay there. Oh, watch the full thing. you need, after this episode, you need to go to Max and watch it. It's so good. I they did. not only introduce Teen Titans, the old school Teen Titans and the new school Teen Titans, but they have cameos of like comic book versions of themselves too. Like, yeah. across time. It's great. Yeah. Uh, they also did a thing where they brought back Freakazoid, which that is, like, I will be forever grateful to Teen Titans Go for that. I never watched Freakazoid. I loved Freakazoid, um, but it in, like it ended, and it, it realistically, it, they're never going to be in Freakazoid. No, now. they're not. Uh, the fact that they put it in a Teen Titans Go to kind of as a memory to it, as well as, in my opinion, 
spread awareness to the younger fucking generation about who Freakazoid is. <laughs> I don't really know who Freakazoid is, and I grew up in that generation. I never watched it. So... No, 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 that's I'm another gonna, time. That's no, another I'm time. I'm not going to get into it, <laughs> but in Teen Titans Go, the way they brought him back is like they found an old, like, I want to say floppy disk, and they put it into a computer, and Freakazoid apparently has been trapped in this floppy disk uh, forever. Like, ever. that's the reason why they can't make a new show for him anymore is because they just can't find him, and apparently he's been in this floppy disk or something. There you go. Uh, which... It's so Freakazoid. Like, that is perfect explanation for a Freakazoid missing kind of thing. But yeah, I, I, Teen Titans is an amazing show. Uh, it did introduce me to characters. Like, I had no clue who Beast Boy was. Me neither uh, until I saw the show. No clue who Starfire or Raven was. Uh, Cyborg I knew because they were trying to push him being a founding member of the Justice League at the he time. He is a founding member of the Justice League, Nate. Yes, now he is. He always has uh, been. He hasn't always been. But, uh, I do, I actually like him as a Teen Titan, though, more than I like him in the Justice League. I like I like him in all iterations. I love Cyborg. I, agreed. I do like him in all iterations. I'm just saying I prefer him more with his interactions with the Teen Titans than I do with his interactions with the Justice League. In the Justice League, a lot of his interactions, from what I've seen, have been, they'll, like, listen to him and then just kind of be like, okay, then what? Like, just kind of just ignore his input or until it's too late. Uh, whereas the Teen Titans, he's a valued member of the team. He is being listened to. Uh, so, yeah, it, I prefer his interactions with the Teen Titans than Justice League. Okay, cool. Yeah, good pick, good pick. So, am I on six? I think I'm a six. Yes. My number six might be on your list. Came from 19... Started in 1997 to 2004. <laughs> Johnny Bravo. Uh, so that is my number three. Number three for you. Johnny Bravo was awesome. Johnny Bravo... Again, this is one of those shows I caught it when I caught it shows. But when I did catch it, it was very funny. Johnny Bravo... If you look at him, though, is one of the worst characters ever created because he's just like this horrible <laughs> man who just treats women horribly. I mean, he's a teenager with raging hormones who... That is the on. largest teenager. I've, that looks like a 30-something-year-old man, dude. Yeah, no, I <laughs> agreed. They've made him massive. But he's a teenager who lives with his mom and hits on every woman he can because... Hey there, sexy mama. Gotta shoot your shot, man. Uh, I love. How, I I gotta say I love all the inspiration they took from Elvis to yeah. make Johnny Bravo. I he love. Is. I'm a huge fan of Elvis music. I love Elvis, and when I saw this, and I was like, "Holy shit! Look at this guy!" Yeah. <laughs> hey there, sexy uh, mama. <laughs> so this is the. Here's the premise of what they've described of uh, on Wiki. Oh God. The series centers on Johnny Bravo, a sunglasses-wearing, muscular, conceited narcissist That's and dim-witted, self-proclaimed womanizing person with a pompadour and an Elvis Presley-esque voice. That's very true. <laughs> of Italian heritage, who lives in Aaron City. It's pretty on par. It's pretty, that's right. Yeah. No. Hey, it, it I is. get all the women. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, the thing is, like, he doesn't say he gets all the women. He just keeps trying to get all the women. Like, and I love how it's a lot of the episodes that women are just like at the park or something, and they have to like bring out mace to this guy who's hitting on them, or karate, or like I will say that as much as he is a womanizer in this show, this show demonstrates very strong women. It's true. Uh, every woman he meets is a master of martial arts of some kind. <laughs> Every woman he meets is not afraid to be alone. She will dominate you if she needs to. And then there's uh, that little kid that always follows him around. Yeah, little Susie, who uh, is incredibly intelligent, who points out all of the problems that is going around. John, who, you really shouldn't be doing that. Uh, no, you're just a kid, you don't understand. Who also <laughs> gaslights the hell out of Johnny because she, like, tricks him into doing shit, too. 
um, because he's so stupid. He is um, pretty smart, okay? And his mom, Bunny, is also an incredibly strong-willed single mother. Like They really every, made her look like a mother from the 80s, for sure. Yeah, every woman in this show is a strong woman. <laughs> Johnny she she is me, huh? like the perfect representation of what they need to defend against. But also, he does like... I will say never goes to the point of like trying dirty shit. It's like always drugs. just like, hey, you me, we should uh we should go out to the movie sometime. Get the hell away from me. Okay, okay, you got it, you got it. Yeah, he's a sleaze. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> uh but he is also he does have somewhat of an honor code. Uh, I will say, Nate, Johnny yeah. Bravo has my very favorite crossover ever with Scooby-Doo. It's my very favorite Scooby-Doo crossover. It was with Johnny Bravo. And the scene that makes me laugh the hardest when I watched it as a kid was the iconic scene, Velma and Johnny Bravo slam into each other. Both their glasses come off. And Velma does a classic, my glasses, my glasses, I can't see without my glasses. And Johnny goes, my glasses, my glasses. I can't be seen without my glasses. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, he's always wearing sunglasses. He never takes them off. And I just think, I don't know why that scene made me laugh so hard as a kid. Like, I can't be seen without my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so stupid. <laughs> it is a great, like, I just, I enjoyed the humor. I it is a great Hanna Barbera style art style, which I love that art style. Uh, I like older art styles. If you can't tell, you like the you know more serious Teen Titans style, you know, I bold like stuff. Almost all art styles. I love slapsticky, old school, cartoony styles. Yeah. Um, one of the things that like cracked me up is Johnny wanted to learn martial arts and so he has a <laughs> sensei and the sensei does not consider him to actually be his student no <laughs> because johnny is so weak and pathetic uh he's like i'll teach you but don't ever call me your master don't don't admit to people that i'm the one who taught you because you're you would just make me look bad like that oh man that's just so sad <laughs> Apparently, I looked up Johnny Bravo. <laughs> Johnny Bravo has a male sensitivity song. Oh, no. It's called The Sensitive Male. <laughs> it's like a minute and a half long. <laughs> oh, look that up on your own time. Yeah. That's funny. Well, yeah, that's why it's number six. We're still at the whole I catch them when I catch them. Number five is when I start seeking out shows. I'm um, I looked it up real quick. Apparently, I don't know. It says Johnny Bravo is actually in his twenties. I told you, man. He does not look like a fifteen-year-old kid. Not fifteen. I always thought he was like eighteen. Johnny Bravo. Age. It says twenties. Twelve twenties. Yeah. It's weird. Why was he still living with his mom? I mean. He didn't seem like he had a job. <laughs> oh my god, it says Johnny has some special moves. Comb toss, motorcycle, Johnny jump, chop barrage. Oh, is this for like a game or something? Oh, okay. Johnny Bravo's first appearance as a playable character in Punch Time Explosion. Whatever that is. Okay. That's why I was like, what are these things? What are they talking about? <laughs> Anyways, we need to move on. So yes. that moves you to your number five, I think, right? Yep. Which is Batman, Brave and the Bold. Again, was that a Cartoon Network show? Yes. It was, like, one of the only Batman DC things that was Cartoon Network. I never watched that as a kid. Uh, It was epic. Like, it was... It was astounding, to be honest. Um... It was the old style that you like, mm -hmm. 
but with a more serious tone of Batman mixed with humor. So it kind of took modern day Batman st- uh, like situations, combined it with Adam West style. Okay. And then put it together and then created an amalgamation of just epicness. It is probably one of the best Batman shows that demonstrates Batman, in my opinion. Uh, you have Batman the Animated Series, which is, in my opinion, the best Batman cartoon. It's not Batman but Bat- Beyond. Huh? It's not Batman Beyond, so it's not the best. You're right, it's not. Uh, it's better. No, nope, so that's just Batman, Batman Brave and the Bold, however, uh, showed his interactions with other t- uh, other members of the Justice League, how he interacted with his villains. Um, I remember my son tried watching it, and I remember that he had an episode on where he was like, he teamed up with like Green Arrow to try to take mm-hmm. down Clock Master or whatever his name is. Yeah. What was that dude's name? The Clock Guy. I know who you're talking about. I think it was like Clock Meister or something. I'm not Some, positive. Yeah. I remember just walking in, and I'm like, what are you watching? And then he was like, look, it's Batman and Green Arrow. I'm like, oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Clock King. That's it, Clock King. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it. the show was just a really good... If you like Batman... I do but like you Batman. Want, but you want less um, doom and gloom... I mean, this you, is the show for you. You kind of need that with Batman, don't you? No, you don't actually. And this <laughs> proves that you don't need him to be doom and gloom and suspicious of everybody. Nate, at what? How many times? How many times on the show did he say, "I am vengeance"? Honestly, I don't. I think he may have said it once. I, I don't honestly don't. Because know. Batman is all about vengeance now. Yeah. No. Uh, he is. There's a great one or a great episode where it has him confronting Joe Chill, the man who killed his parents. Yeah. And when he's meeting or when he's talking to him, it has uh like he confronts him and he takes off the mask and he's like he tells him about uh the murder that happened to the Waynes and he's like, "But why do you care?" and he like takes off his mask and he's like, "Because I'm the child." And uh, he's like, oh no, what? And behind Batman, you have, uh, the spirit, or not the spirit, what is, what is his name? I'm blanking on his name. You have the Phantom Stranger, and you have, uh, hold on, let's see here, Spectre, that's it. You have the Phantom Stranger and Spectre, both of whom are acting as the devil and angel on batman's shoulder the okay. phantom stranger is like show restraint be the man your parents would want you to be be the man you have spent your life becoming and while the specter is like justice kill him revenge he deserves to die he does not deserve to live it's more like uh, vengeance yeah and both of them are played by phantom stranger who is the voice of reason and trying to keep him being Batman is played by Kevin Conroy. Yes. The original voice of Batman. While the specter who is all about like trying to get him to kill this guy because he wants him to experience the justice of the scales is played by Mark Hamill. The original Joker. That's pretty cool. Actually. Then you have the flashback where it shows Martha and Thomas Wayne, and they are voiced by the original Batman and Catwoman, Adam West, and I forget the original Catwoman's name. But, yeah, the entire episode is just a callback to the, all of the original actors, voice actors of these, char- these iconic characters. That's pretty sweet. And it, that, like, I will say up, I did tear up during that episode. Oh, because there it, was it is. a very <laughs> emotional episode of Batman struggling with his inner self on whether he should give in to the temptation of ending this man's life who ended his parents' lives or staying true to his creed and being the man he wants himself to be. I just see you in your room just like, this is so great. 
it was it wasn't like that like kind of tear it was just a tear came to my eye and i was like damn like that this is genuinely an emotional moment for this this is great <laughs> uh plus it was just the fact that they thought to bring these actors in to play these other characters for this particular scene like ah it was such a great thing uh then you have like i said batman brave and the bold has perhaps my all-time favorite rendition of Aquaman of all time. Really? Uh, because he is a mythical character in Batman Brave and the Bold. He sees himself as a mythical hero. He's always, like Every time Aquaman comes on, he's like, Ha-ha! I will take and vanquish this quest. Come on, Batman! Let us be brave and bold. So he's Thor. Like, basically. Except it's Aquaman. Like... He is what you would expect a Atlantean king to be. Come not now. a like modern tech guy that's like, oh, we gotta save the oceans. Batman, stop being a dick. This dude is like, we will slay these mythical creatures because Atlantis is a mythical place. It is like Aquaman is just so cool. Okay. Uh I believe they also did a Scooby Doo crossover. Of course so, they did. Scooby Doo's yeah. and everything. <laughs> Yeah, which did have Matthew Lillard voicing Shaggy. Matthew Lillard, woo! Uh, bam. Highly recommend it. Uh, it also plays with Batmite, uh, the Joker King. Just all around, it introduced a bunch of storylines in a very great way with good art style. Nice. And without having to resort to... Batman equals dark and sadness. How many times did he go? <laughs> That's another thing. Batman <laughs> sounds like Batman. He doesn't sound like his voice is being scalded by lava. <laughs> Where's the Joker? I need the Joker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's played by Diedrich Bader. Nice. Uh, I don't know who that is. He. So I know him from the Drew Carey show. Uh, but... Yeah, he was also apparently in uh, Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy. Oh, really? H Hoss Delgado. No idea who that is. Yeah, no clue who that is. But, yeah, I like him as an uh, actor in Drew Carey Show when I found out. He I was very hesitant when I found out he was voicing Batman. Because when I think of the guy, I do not think Batman. Uh, he's, a, he's more of a comedian kind of guy. And then... When I watched Batman Brave and the Bold, I was like, holy fuck. This, like, he is probably the best voice acting besides Kevin Conroy. He is the second Batman. Oh, I know who that guy is. I remember him from the Drew Carey show. Yeah. Uh, his voice is who I think of as Batman if it's not Kevin Conroy. Nice. So, All right. Yeah. So what am I on, number five? You are on number five, yes. All right, my number five is a show I don't know if you watched as a kid. It was uh, from 1998 to 2005, and that is the Powerpuff Girls. I did watch it, uh, but when I was a child, I did have the mentality of like, oh, girls, I don't care. Um, but I did like catch a couple of episodes later when my niece would watch it, and I'm like, damn, this is actually a pretty good show. Uh, I was sleeping on this when I was a kid. What the fuck? I uh, loved this show as a kid, but... I was like you said that mentality of like, this is one of those like hidden shows. Like, this show's great, but I can't let even my friends know I watch a show, a girl show. <laughs> oh, that I didn't, I didn't care what other people thought. It was purely my own mentality. Oh like, no, Man. it was one of those like I was ashamed that I liked this show as a kid. It was one of those like, I would go to school, and I mentioned like, oh yeah, did you guys see that Powerpuff Girls are on? And they were like, oh. That's a girl show. Who watches that? And I go, yeah, yeah. Who that show sucks. Oh, <laughs> and I'd go I, home and be like, fuck yeah, Barbara girl. <laughs> ne never had that issue. Um, it was purely just first off the art style. Um, Again, bubbly art style. I like a bubbly art style. Well, the art style, I liked it. It's just there. Some of the characters, I wasn't a big fan of. The Mojo design, Jojo or the design. Uh, really, I think, uh, what was it? Him? Him? Yep. The cross-dressing demon. I hate that the, um, 
like lobster hands on it. Hey, and good for them though. Making a cross-dressing villain be acceptable and okay in 1998, and nobody batted an eye. That was cool. I mean, they turned a cross-dressing demon into a bad guy. Doesn't that advocate that they're demons and bad guys? I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, the show itself is great. Remember that webcomic I told you about Billy and Mandy? Yes, I remember. Featured Powerpuff Girls. Of course uh, I did. Had an entire, uh, like, separate webcomic, actually, that was the Powerpuff Girls going to high school and meeting Dexter. That's pretty sweet. Uh, and all of, that's where the whole Samurai Jack is the coach, is a gym coach. Um, and I gotta say, it was an amazing webcomic. The Powerpuff Girls is definitely great. Um, I haven't... I did go back after I realized that, and I did watch more episodes. I did not watch any of the new stuff. No, I don't even consider that Powerpuff Girls. It's, the new stuff is not good. Uh, I, I haven't watched it. Um, I did hear that they introduced a new Powerpuff Girl. They did? Oh, no. It. Like, she was apparently the... Uh, original proto, uh, the original Powerpuff Girl. That's stupid. Um, That's really stupid. Who ran away? Really, really. So stupid. she's like a teenager when they're still little girls. Oh uh, my god, so dumb. But she ran away because she thought the professor didn't like her. She thought the professor didn't trust her because of her powers. I gotta say, I'm really glad that they canceled the live action Powerpuff Girls. Though I did not want that. I didn't even know they were making one. Oh, action. they were making one. And uh, one of the Powerpuff Girls was supposed to be Chloe Bennett, who is Sky from okay. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think she was supposed to be Bubbles, I think. Okay. I don't. I don't remember. But yeah, they canceled it, thank God, because I, I did not want that to come out. That looked terrible. Hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, so I, who was your favorite character on the Powerpuff Girls? Uh, I would probably say Blossom. That was my favorite. No, wait, which is... Bubbles. Bubbles is the blue one, alright. Bl- Bubbles is blue, Blossom is red in the yeah. leader, and Buttercup is the green one. And then there's Mojo Jojo, and there's the Professor, and then there's him. Then well, there was... Say, uh, what was her name? She was... There was the little, the little rich girl that hated the Powerpuff Girls because they didn't let her on the team. Hey, I didn't watch it enough to know yeah. too much about it. I knew the main characters, like the professor, the mayor. Uh, oh, do, do, do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know very many of the new or the side characters other than what was in the webcomic. And... Yeah, there was, a, there was a character who, if I remember right, was like one of those spoiled little rich kid brats who was like, I should be on the Powerpuff Girls. And they're like, N- no, you're you're annoying and terrible and you treat humanity like crap and she's like you know what if you're not gonna let me be a powerpuff girls i'm gonna be a villain and they were like okay we'll take you down all the time then (laughs) yeah makes sense (laughs) so yeah i love the powerpuff girls growing up and like i said it it bums me out thinking back that i treated it as like no one can know i like this show this is a girls show (laughs) so stupid yeah i've Never had that issue, uh, but I did know some people who did. Like they were, they were a little self conscious for enjoying a girl show. Although I did show Carter, Mark, not Carter, uh, my my son. I showed him the, an episode of the Powerpuff Girls. And I go, hey, you want to watch this? And he goes, no, that's a girl show. I'm like, same kid. <laughs> Yeah, damn it. Damn that mentality. We, it's you're gonna regret that in later life, kid. Uh, but yeah, that that's my number five is the Powerpuff Girls. Okay. That's good. Uh so my next pick, we have to jump actually, because yep. I've done my four, three, uh, and one. So all that's left for me is number two. I got two and one. Uh Dexter's Laboratory. That's my number two. So ha. Huh? We're knocking our number two out at the same time. 1996 to 2003. Oh, my God. What a great show. <laughs> like, this is it so was. good. This was, uh, this was almost tied for number one for me. I, I can understand that. Dexter's Dexter, Lab and my number one were very, very close. Dexter is just a fun character. 
<laughs> so speak when I was making this list and I was like, oh yeah, Dexter's Lab is great. Then I remembered they made a video, some fan made a video, a death battle. It wasn't actually death battle, but it was they they made it a death battle. And it was Dexter versus Jimmy Neutron. Who is the more who is the better genius? Jimmy Neutron beat the crap out of Dexter Nate. Yeah, fuck that shit. Uh... <laughs> I was like, because I know you. For those that don't know, Nate does not like Jimmy Neutron. He hated. Didn't you say you hated the art style of Jimmy Neutron? You hated I the was, show. Was not a fan of the 3D animation style they went with. Um, I am not a fan. I I tried watching the show and I just could not get into any of the characters. <laughs> All of the characters annoyed me. That makes sense. So yeah, when I saw this video of Dexter versus Jimmy, I go, man, I thought of you immediately. Which is kind of ironic, because obviously the guy who created the video was more of a fan of Jimmy, because it starts out with Jimmy like winning the like uh, an award, and Dexter being the little like loser who's just like, if you can't have it, no one can, and trying to take it from him. And I was like, oh, they're doing Dexter dirty. Come on, man. Yeah, uh, I, so, again, I've never watched too much of Jimmy Neutron. I've watched maybe four or five episodes. Oh, I, I've watched next. every episode of Jimmy Neutron. Um, but what others have told me, I would say Dexter would win because yeah, he should have won. Doesn't a lot of Jimmy stuff like break down, malfunction, or yep. Not and he, exactly go until the way he, he has a brain planned. blast. <laughs> yeah, until he ever actually plants. Dexter's shit worked. Like Dexter was Dexter, crazy. Dexter was probably the cra- like the smartest person on Cartoon Network. Dexter had an entire city underneath his suburban house Dude, that I was re- literally just tech. <laughs> I remember there's an episode of Dexter's Lab where he gets lost in his lab. Yeah, and there's like decaying like robot parts and buildings around him because he's like i haven't been to this lab part of the lab in years and i'm like how fucking big is this lab is this like an entire new york city under his fucking house yeah this kid built a city underneath his suburban house filled with tech and he's only what like six seven I think he, I, no, he's like ten. He's got to be something like ten. I also 12. don't remember how old they ever said Dexter was, but still, he's super young. He had to have been started when he was like an infant, practically. Wow! It and, says Dexter's lab was about six to eight. Yeah, so that's he, crazy. And he, Dee Dee is a couple years older, so De- Dee Dee probably been like nine or ten years old. Yeah, Dexter and Dexter's experiments. For the most part, worked. Every time. Uh, the only reason they would malfunction would be Dee Dee. Says here, Dexter's lab, Dexter's IQ is roughly around 210 to 250. 210 250? That's what, what it says Jimmy? on... Oh, I don't know. Here, hold on. Jimmy Neutron. Well, first of all, Jimmy Neutron's 11. Uh, it says here 210. IQ. Jimmy's is 10. 210. So, I mean, they're pretty pretty on par with each other. Yeah, their IQ is. But Dexter, Also, again, Dexter's like 6 and Jimmy's like t- t- 11 years old, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Imagine Dexter, Dexter at 15 or something. Yeah. Dexter created his world's Superman. And he also created Monkey. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, Monkey that's what you mean. That world Superman. For uh, some reason, Monkey I was has... thinking of Justice Friends. I mean, Monkey does help Justice Friends. Uh, Monkey, Justice Friends though was a parody of Captain America, Hulk, and Thor. Hey there, it's your pu- it's your friend, Puppet Pal Slim, and Pup. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I forgot about those. Two. So it's such a great. Thing. Yeah, so, Dexter's lab has three different things going on. You got Dexter, you got the Justice Friends, and you got the weird puppet world of Puppet Pal. Was it Jim or Slim or something like that? Well, there was also uh, what was his name? Uh, fucking Hank or something. Hank. Action Hank. Oh, Action Hank! I forgot about Action Hank. Yeah, like 
They had so a... much going on with that show. Yeah, so many things centered around Dexter's Labs universe. And Dexter was just super genius. And I had I hate to say it, but I think Mandark would beat Jimmy. Because Mandark <laughs> also had a <laughs> city underneath <laughs> his house. Like everything Dexter had, Mandark had too. To just a slightly lesser degree. Do you remember the episode where Mandark, the entire episode is just showing how, like, his daily life, and it's just like everything is just ha 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 ha. And these brushes, he's just swish, 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 swish. Yeah. And then, like, uh, he, he tries to ask Dee Dee out on a date, and she's like, no. And he's like, wah ha ha, wah ha 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 ha. Yeah, his. <laughs> his sounds always has to follow that repetition. It's so stupid. Uh, or or uh what was it freaking um oh man freaking not man dark the other one the other, oh the the episode where uh dexter gets like meets his future self and he's all huge and buff and he has long hair and stuff yeah do you remember that episode mm-hmm. or um man there's just so many great episodes this show is so good the it's, the uh, the the French episode where he can't can only say one word. Oh, I I do remember that. It was a uh, Parle like du laser. fromage. Yeah, <laughs> he was trying to learn another language, and it only taught him cheese. Because uh, it, yeah, it's, it, no, I think it was egg something. Oh, I thought fromage was cheese. I don't remember, but I remember he had what it, the whole concept was. He put like these like headphones on while he slept of him like a, it was a cd of mm-hmm. learning french and it kept skipping on that one word that one yeah. phrase until <laughs> that's all he did but it impressed everybody and they're like oh my god you're so amazing you're so cultured dexter <laughs> trying to pick up those girls with that french language or uh the episode where he replaces Dee, Dee and he's doing auditions oh what does this button do? And he's like, excuse me. And he has to go get a cold shower. And I go, how did I not notice this as a kid? <laughs> yeah. Or turning his entire family into Voltron. <laughs> oh, like, can we, first of all, can we talk about how awesome his freaking robot suit is? Yeah. His Dexter, robot suit is sick, man. Dexter has a mech. He has exoskeletons that, uh, throw dodgeballs the speed of light <laughs> he has time travel so he can access three other versions of himself to come help him dude the council of <laughs> reeds <laughs> yeah like i just it boggles my mind anybody could think deck jimmy would beat dexter because dexter just has like so said, many other things going i on. think this dude was a massive jimmy neutron fan and that's why he made the video <laughs> Yeah, because he uh, even he even had his uh, robot dog Goddard join in the fight, and I'm like, Dexter doesn't need a robot dog. Dexter could take him out by himself. Monkey, just send monkey at. He doesn't even need monkey. Even need... He has I'm tech. Saying... Could do it. <laughs> I'm saying Dexter doesn't even need to lift a finger. He can just be like monkey, go handle this, and monkey be like ee ee ooh ah bitch please. Uh, or Mandark's duck version of monkey. Like he would just go in, fuck everything up, and then. Come back to Miss Honeydew, who be like, "Oh, monkey, you did it again! Congrats!" And we we all know Miss Honeydew was after that monkey D. Like, come on, <laughs> like, come on! It's a cartoon, man. It's a kids show. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, there. That was some super suggestive uh, cartooning right there. Especially how everybody fawned over Action Hank. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> man. Dexter's Lab's good, but there is it one is. show that is better, in my opinion. So what is your number one? My number one is a show I guarantee you did not like as a kid. You know exactly what this is. Uh, I know what it is, and I did like it. I oh, okay. didn't watch all of it, but I did uh, like the show. I've watched it was a fun every show. single episode a billion times. From 1999 to 2002, my parents hated this show, especially my mother, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Yeah. My mom hated that I watched the show. Hated this show so much. I liked it. it was I loved a, this show. It was a fun show. And then as I got older and started seeing, like, I enjoyed reading the theories behind a lot oh, of this stuff. Oh, there's so many crazy theories about this show. Uh, so what this show is, 
what the show is, is there's three guys, the main characters, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It's Ed, Ed, and Double D, who's also named Ed. And what it is is that these there's three personalities. There's Eddie, who is the, quote, I guess leader? Would you consider him the leader of the group? Yeah, I think yeah. so. He's got, he's the biggest slime ball on the planet. All he cares about is getting money and scamming people out of their money so he can buy jawbreakers. He is the man with the plan. Yeah, well, that always fails. The The, the plan yeah, always the, fails. Never said it was a good plan. Just, just the man with a plan. Then there is Double D, who is the smart person. He's the smart one of the group. He's like the genius. Which, I know we just finished talking about Dexter, but like in that universe, Double D is like inventing crazy shit. Like, he is a genius in that fucking universe. Exactly. And then there is Ed, <laughs> who's the best character on the show, in my Honestly, opinion. Honestly, I think Double D might be like the unofficial inspiration for Kid Next Door's 2x4 technology. Because that dude could, like. Which make came shit. first, though? I Ed and Eddie was 99, and Kid Next Door was 98. Oh, was it? Oh, That's maybe what? Double D was actually a Kids Next Door agent then. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then there's <laughs> Ed, who is my favorite character in the show. You see a theme, Nate, <laughs> of yes, my favorite the, uh, character. I will say Ed is also my favorite character. In <laughs> Ed, is, uh, Ed is a complete and utter dumbass. Like, when because, I say dumbass, I mean he is brain stupid. Like, he is so dumb. His his idiotic, idiotic tendencies are more charming for some reason. Like, but the toes! <laughs> he's more, he's like a nice, harmless bunny that could rip your arms off. Dude, there are episodes where, like, okay, first of all, the creators of Ed and Eddie must have been taking acid or something, because this show is fucking crazy. Like, this show doesn't make any sense at all. Every episode is its own thing, and it doesn't make any goddamn sense half the time. Like, yeah. I remember there's an episode where Ed and Eddie break the fourth wall, realize they're in a cartoon... And starts messing with their world. At one point, like, they take the outline of Jimmy off of him. And he turns into a pool of this body liquid. Ed is like, I'm hungry. I want to eat something. Grabs the moon out of the sky and eats it like a cookie. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening in this episode? (laughs) Which just feeds more into theories than than not. I remember there's one episode... Where they create, like, this box city. All it is is just, you know, just boxes. Like, giant boxes that you get from packaging. Packaging boxes. And they, you know, drew on them, make them look like some cities, like little windows and doors and stuff. And all of a sudden, they go into that little, little, little box city. All of a sudden, it turns into this massive actual city where they get lost and they can't find each other. And I'm like... Is this supposed... Are we supposed to believe this is like an imagination kind of thing? Like Calvin and Hobbes style? Or what the... But like, shit happens in the city that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, wait. Is it... Did they go through like a wormhole? Is this an actual city now? Like, what is happening? Yeah. (laughs) It it is a very, like, out there cartoon. Like I said, they had to have been on acid or something when they made this cartoon. Um, who, who would you say is the best characters in the show? You said Ed is your number one. Ed is my number one. Who else did you really like? Uh, Plank. Plank? Are you kidding me? Plank doesn't do anything. Exactly. Uh, Plank is the perfect neutral character in the show because they treat (laughs) him like a character. Johnny's just like, no, don't get it wet. He swells. (laughs) Yeah. Like, it cracks me up that everybody just goes along with Johnny's insanity of thinking this plank is a being, a living being. Well, I mean, in one episode, I think there was an episode where Plank, like, they couldn't explain who was, like, doing this to the children. Like, if I remember right, the kids were, like, disappearing, and they couldn't figure out who the hell is taking these kids. And then the Eddie finds Plank 
like swoop like the the chair spins around and plank is sitting there so i'm like is this a sentient board maybe <laughs> i mean again this show had i this show provokes more entertaining theories than i found the show itself to be while i did enjoy the show i, I love, love the theories show. uh the theories are amazing the show itself is good the characters are hilarious what so, about yeah. what about uh Rolf? Rolf is hilarious. <laughs> See, Rolf is my second favorite character. He's the best, dude. <laughs> He'd probably be my third. <laughs> Who's number two? Oh, he's a plank. plank. Yeah, plank. That's right. Plank's my second favorite. What character. about the Kanker sisters? Ah, uh, they're okay. Yeah. They're not great. <laughs> they're boy crazy over the edge. That's about it. That's their and their name feature. Kanker. Ew, what a gross, what a gross name. I think that like that, that's meant to be. I know it is. Thing. I know. I know. Plus, weren't they designed after the uh, Hocus Pocus witches? I think so. I don't. I've never really liked Hocus Pocus because the leader is a curly red-haired woman who's very arrogant and like full of herself. The brunette is a more uh, like trying to keep the other sisters happy, and then the blonde is just a really dumb one. Yeah. I will say this, I, well, growing up as a kid, this show actually got me uh, its own video game for the Nintendo to GameCube, and it was called Ed and Eddie's Miss Ed Adventures, and it was a show, or not a show, a game that was received very poorly. It was a very poorly received game, but I was like, Mom, buy me this game. This is Ed and Eddie. You have to buy this for me right now, <laughs> and I love the game. It was so stupid, but it was such a good game. Yeah. So yeah, that's my number one. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I know my mother hates this show, but that's okay. I loved it as a kid, and I love it now. If it if it's on, I don't see where it'd ever be on. But like, if if I ever saw it on streaming or something, I'd probably watch it. Uh, would you be okay with them doing a like reboot or a what like a continuation or something? Ah, oh, man, I don't know because. One, I don't think that'll ever happen because this show, w I don't think would hit modern audiences, like modern kids now. They wouldn't work yeah. well with them. But I, I don't know. The original was so good and uh, such a such a thing of its time. I don't think it would translate well with modern graphic or mo modern animation and modern thoughts. You know what I mean? Like the, the mindset we have now would not match what it did yeah. in the late 90s and early 2000s. So... It is on HBO Max. Or oh, Max. sick, dude! I'm gonna watch that. All five seasons. That's great. That maybe I'll see if my kid likes. It. I don't think my son will like it, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Man. He might like it. Well, that is our he top is ten. A mini you, after all. Yeah, that is our top ten Cartoon Network shows. Nate, what did you think of the list? What did you think? I thought it was a good list. Uh, a lot of my highs were your lows. Which <laughs> is ironic. Oh. A lot of my highs didn't even make your list, like at a Nettie. <laughs> How dare they? Uh, you know, I'm surprised real quick. I'm surprised no one mentioned Courage, the cowardly dog. I, so I like Courage, the character. Like, Courage is a the dog. He is second only to Scooby. But the show itself, I was never a fan of. Yeah. We did have one comment. It was from our friend Jackie, and she said, "So is Adult Swim one, or because it's actually on Cartoon Network, I have to say that?" And I said, "I say just Cartoon Network because we put Adult Swim, we start getting things like anime and stuff because Toonami is part of Adult Swim." And that was the end of that conversation. So she she brought out what you were talking about with like, should we include Adult Swim and all that stuff? Uh. I agree that it is a Cartoon Network thing. It is a block of Cartoon Network. Um, but sadly, I didn't include any of it because the anime and whatnot, I would prefer to do as a separate list. Agreed. That's what I mentioned. But I do agree that it is a part of Cartoon Network. So anybody who like includes that kind of stuff on that on this type of list, go for it. Like that. Yeah. That's my opinion. Makes yeah, sense. It's fair game. Squidbillies, right, Nate? No, I hated Squidbillies. So <laughs> I hated Squidbillies, too. 
<laughs> I don't know why that's the first thing that keeps popping in my mind. I don't know why either. It is. <laughs> the show's terrible. Anyways, to me, that like is one the, of the low tiers. That is the end of our episode. I know it's a, kind of a long episode. It's almost two hours long. If you guys enjoyed the episode, please like, make a like and comment. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Uh, comment below anything you want us to do in the future. We have a Discord, Twitter, Facebook page, all that stuff. We'll see you guys on the next episode.